Hello! This is the first in a series of Q&A sessions that Great Escape Farms will be holding over the next few months. These questions come from our YouTube channel, email, blog post comments, Facebook, and even a few face-to-face -face questions I've received. If you would like to submit a question, you can do so in the comment section of any of the above medium that I just mentioned, or you can email me the question directly. My email address is todd at greatescapefarms.com. Our first question comes from our YouTube video titled, Transplanting Trees by Hand. So a little background on this video. This video was about transplanting some rather established trees and moving them from my Pasadena homestead out to the farm. I moved a dwarf Shapovia and an Illinois Everbearing Mulberry and mentioned the Illinois Everbearing was grafted. The question from the person, or the, actually the statement, it says, I don't think that mulberry needs to be grafted. Our response is, most mulberry don't, but I have only ever seen Illinois Everbearing as grafted, so I assumed it was a requirement. I have done a little research online and found some vendors say that they grafted this cultivar to make it more cold hardy. I've also found other gardeners out there that stated that Illinois Everbearing does not create viable seeds and is difficult to propagate via cuttings. For this reason, these gardeners grafted this variety just because it was the easiest way for them to propagate the Illinois Everbearing Mulberry. Our next question comes from our YouTube video titled, Sure Call Fusion for Home Cell Phone Signal Booster Product Review. A little background on this video. This video was a product review of a cell phone signal booster. I showed a lot of views of installation and discussed how it is difficult to make it visually appealing. I had a viewer comment, for aesthetic purposes, you could build it into a design of a windmill or birdhouse, fake or real, so it does not stand out as bad. This viewer's name was Tom, so thank you for the suggestion, Tom. That would likely work, and a windmill is definitely one of the things on my long-term to-do list. For right now, it is worth having the Yagi antenna in plain view just so I get a cell signal boost. But I do want to point out with this one that Tom made a suggestion here on something I could do, and it just so happens I'm going to do it anyhow, but I really, really do appreciate all the suggestions I'm getting on different ways and different things to do. I not only learn from it, but others do as well, so please continue to comment. Thank you so much. Our next question comes from the YouTube video titled, Hardwood Cutting Propagation, Winter Plant Propagation. The background of this video is it is talking about taking cuttings from plants in the winter and using those cuttings to propagate and make new plants. It's a totally different setup than it is from softwood cuttings that I do in the summer. The YouTube viewer asks, I'm in wet western Oregon and I'm thinking that it might be easier for me to take the rootings inside where I can control the moisture content, otherwise things rot in the low oxygen saturated soils that we have here in the winter. The question is, would you recommend keeping the cuttings in cool temps, not house warm, like my enclosed unheated porch? And our response is, if you keep the cuttings in a warm environment, then they will not go dormant and you will have to do a mist irrigation system to keep the leaves moist. I have a different problem than yours, but I have a similar solution. I had some cuttings that were dormant and we were going down into single digits outside which would have killed the cuttings because they were in pots and not protected in the ground. I moved my cuttings into my garage which usually stays a bit warmer than outside. They overwintered just fine in the garage. I moved them back out in late February when the danger of single digit temperatures was passed. If you do keep your plants in a garage or in a porch or something, you do have to make sure that you keep them moist because not only oversaturation is an issue, but also completely drying out is an issue. So you still have to wet them. And I have hundreds of plants. That's why I moved them out of my garage as soon as I could because I didn't want to have to be watering them constantly in the garage. Another option with saturated soil is to mix in some sand in the area that you're going to use for propagation. The sand will allow the water to flow through more easily and to not rot the roots. However, if you're doing a lot of plants like I am, this could be kind of cost prohibitive and cause other issues just because of the volume that you're dealing. So I'm not sure what volume you're dealing with, but mixing sand or moving it inside will do fine, at least on a short-term basis. Our next question comes from YouTube video, Planting Pawpaw Seeds. The background on this video is it is about how to stratify and then plant pawpaw seeds. Pawpaw is a tree native to the eastern United States and is the largest native fruit to the U.S. The viewer states, thanks for the video. I just bought some pawpaw seeds last week. They have not arrived yet. 
I guess it might be too late this winter to get them stratified and planted, but maybe not. I have a few questions if you don't mind. Do the seeds have to be kept moist from the time they are harvested from the fruit or just once you start the stratification process? Next question, when you plant all the seeds in one container like that, won't the roots get tangled as they grow? Next question, how many years minimum before you can transfer them to full sun? Our response, the seeds do need to be kept moist from the time that they are taken from the fruit. I have seen reports of germination rates as low as 10% if they dry out for even a short period of time. I'm guessing that all the roots in one container will not tangle too much. This is my first time trying it, but these particular plants have tap roots that go straight down and not so many lateral roots that go out at least the first year. This is just an experiment for me this year because of my lack of space be it with the move and everything else going on. Even if they do tangle together a little bit, I will remove them all at once when they are dormant, and that's the time to do anything with bare root plants. So what I'll do is I'll let them get cool or cold outside, lose their leaves, and at that point I'll remove all the soil and separate the roots at that point, and I can do it as cautiously as possible on each individual root. As for your question about full sun, I have seen online on several different sources that as young as the third year, if they're in full sun before then, they may get a sunburn on the leaves. Believe it or not, plants can actually get sunburn on leaves, and pawpaw is one of them in their early years. If the sunburn gets too bad, they could die. Sounds weird, I know, but that is what they say, and I have lost a few that were in full sun. Congratulations on your seeds. I love pawpaws. You may want to check with the person or company that you bought your seeds from. I believe most will have already been stratified for you. That concludes my response, but he responded back and said, thanks for your reply. Yes, I checked the listing. He got it on eBay, and the seeds have been stratified already, so as long as they don't freeze in transit, they will be good when they get here. Our next question is from a YouTube video titled DIY Cheap Greenhouse. And the background of this video is it is about building a cheap greenhouse with supplies that you can find in your local hardware store. LRG Scully asks, what scale is it? Meters by meters. It is about 7 foot wide by 8 foot long. That equates to 2.13 meters, which is 213 centimeters, by 2.44 meters, or 244 centimeters. If you haven't checked out this video yet and you ever are thinking about doing a greenhouse, this is a very solid built plan here. It's not so much of a plan, but it shows you what I put together, and it is very solid built, and it is definitely a good start starter greenhouse. So it's if you go to our YouTube channel or our blog post, just do a search on DIY Cheap Greenhouse. Our next question is from the YouTube with a title, Red Wiggler Worm Compost Pin Update. And the background of this video is that it is an update on the progress of a Red Wiggler Worm Farm I established last year. This is my first go around on one of these and I've received a lot of great advice. The comment is all the worm juice is an indication that you are too wet. What he's saying here is that underneath of the bin I have another bin that catches any juice that comes out and I had a fair amount of moisture in there. So he's saying that it was too much worm juice coming out and that it is too wet. I stated that makes sense. I guess I need to cut back on the greens and he replied Great Escape Farms, I wouldn't say cut back on the greens, but add more browns. My worms, same as yours, love cardboard. When I feed, I add cardboard to help with the water. And I replied back, I have a good bit of cardboard. I will spread it around later this week and try it. And a little bit of update here, which I actually didn't put on the YouTube itself. Instead of actually putting cardboard in, another thing that the worms absolutely love are leaves. And I have lots of oak leaves around. So I did toss quite a few of those in. I did cut back a little bit on my greens. The worms seem to be doing absolutely wonderfully. Our next question is from our YouTube channel. The title is Propagating Nanking Cherries. The background of this video is I am talking about taking cuttings from a nanking cherry bush and using the cuttings to propagate and create new plants. Graham asks, do you only use sand for the cuttings? And our reply is, I do use sand for my summer or softwood cuttings. This is because I use a mist irrigation system that sprays water once every five minutes. I want to keep the leaves wet, but I don't want to saturate the soil and the roots. The sand lets the water drain and it helps a lot. I found that concrete sand works great. 
For hardwood cuttings taken in the winter, you can use straight up garden soil because you are not using a mist irrigation system. Our final question for this series is from our YouTube channel and the title of the video is Propagating Sweet Scarlet Gumi. The background is the video is talking about taking cuttings from sweet scarlet gumi bushes and using those cuttings to propagate new plants. MCDS asks, great video again, any chance of getting a few starts? And our reply is, I have to see how many I actually have this spring. However many I do have will be for sale at Great Escape Nursery. That's greatescapenursery.com. We actually do have about a dozen sweet scarlet gumi left that have not been sold yet as of, let's see, today is March 20th, 2017, but they will likely sell out before the season is over, so get your order in quick. So that's it for this series. Please comment either in the show notes here or in the YouTube, whatever means you're watching it, and let me know what you think about this series if you like the question and answer. If you have a question that you would like answered, let me know. Go ahead and send me an email to Todd at greatescapefarms.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.